Hello classes, so I'm covering the Aristotelian method and Aristotelian metaphysics by Thomas E. Taco. Uh, the abstract uh, I have highlighted here, uh, given that that answers question uh, two. What is the relationship between methodology and metaphysics for Aristotle according to Taco? So that might be B. So it's either 2 or B question having to do with the relationship between methodology and metaphysics for Aristotle according to Taco. So really he shows us this right away. So we're answering that question. In the paper, I examine what exactly is Aristotelian metaphysics. My inquiry into Aristotelian metaphysics should not be understood to be so much concerned with details of his metaphysics. I am rather concerned with his methodology. Uh, okay. So then he goes on about the methodological aspects of Aristotle's metaphysics, showing that the crucial features have to do with the method of philosophizing are the relationship between science and metaphysics. Okay, his defense of the principle of non-contradiction. For Aristotle, natural science is second philosophy. Okay, uh, but this is so only because there is something more fundamental in the world, something that natural science, a science of movement, cannot study. Furthermore, and that is their metaphysics, right? So furthermore, Aristotle demonstrates that metaphysics enters the picture at a fundamental level as he argues that the PNC is a metaphysical rather than a logical principle. So all that's showing you is that that's the methodology that Taco is focusing on. All right. So in other words, the methodology is if met metaphysics is first philosophy, science is second philosophy, then we're following an order here from the more uh, fundamental, the more general to the more specific in the case of natural science. OK, and that's the ordering from the universal to the particular that we've highlighted. OK, so I think I found another. So the most important part aspect of Aristotelian method is that metaphysics lies at its heart, i.e. metaphysical considerations that Aristotle makes uh, affect all other aspects of this philosophy. OK, metaphysics is first philosophy, the starting point for our philosophical scientific projects. So that's our methodology. Okay, and then here's where he's highlighting the universals to the particulars. So this can be seen, for example, in the very beginning of his physics, where Aristotle notes that the best way to reach information about the science of nature is to advance from universals to particulars, because universals are easier for us to grasp with the help of the senses. Okay, so that's important. They're answering methodology for metaphysics, according to Taco. And that could also serve to a certain degree to answer uh, what is metaphysics, correct? So let's continue. So thinking of this idea of uh, moving from the universal to the particular, we have this quote here. Uh, let's see. From De Interpretione whereby spoken sounds are symbols of affections in the soul and written marks symbols of spoken sounds and just as written marks are not the same for all men neither are spoken sounds but what these are in the first place signs of affections of the soul are the same for all and what these affections are likenesses of actual things are also the same so, in other words, we have a way that we're feeling in our soul, affections of the soul, even emotions of the soul, let's say, so feelings of the soul, uh, then becoming written marks, symbols of spoken sounds as well. And these spoken sounds then become signs of then the affections of the soul which are the same for all. 
and what of these affections and likenesses of actual things are also the same and what these affections are likenesses of actual things are also the same so in other words actual things are identified by the different ways in which we understand them with our different languages and such so with all our differences we still see actual things similarly right we all understand uh letters to be uh indication of a word and then likewise uh, becoming something to be language as uh, contained in the symbols of each letter, things like that, that become universal as well. So that's a demonstration by Aristotle of that universal to the uh, particular. So then scrolling down, 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 down. It must be noted here that although Aristotle's account, that of metaphysics as the science of essence, is itself a metaphysical answer to the question about the nature of physics, he does not consider other possible answers to the question as well, namely that the primary being is either the particular or the universal. Uh, and indeed, in the categories, he proposed a different answer. Okay, so that, in other words, uh, metaphysics is the study of essence and it is the it is understood as what metaphysics is metaphysics is the study of essence here okay so that's primary as well so going into more how we could have answered question one what is metaphysics okay so then uh the relationship between first philosophy and special sciences we have uh the following uh, there is a science which investigates being as being and the attributes which belong to this in virtue of its own nature. Now, this is not the same. OK, so in other words, this is metaphysics. Now, this is not the same as any of the so-called special sciences, for none of these others deals generally with being as being. None of these other sciences deal with metaphysics the concern of metaphysics being as being okay they cut off part of being and investigate the attributes of this part this is what met, uh, mathematical sciences for instance do now since we are speaking about first principles and the highest causes clearly there must be something which uh, in to which these belong in virtue of its own nature so in other words metaphysics is primary because it's a study of being as being, and all other sciences are uh, ancillary to that. So that could be a way of uh, answering what is metaphysics. While metaphysics is about this question, what is being qua being, it is also about the very nature of this question the possibility of metaphysics. So in other words, that's another answer to your question. Being for the sake of being, being for its own understanding is what this qua here means, something like that. Being for its own sake, so that we are understanding what being is, something like that. Uh, and that is ultimately also a study of metaphysics. Okay, so now quickly into the principle of non-contradiction. So a few of you were probably taking uh, Taco's Q to write PNC rather than the PNC. I would feel it would be more correct to write the PNC is da 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 da. Then, indeed, Aristotle's line of thought suggests that this link is often taken to be uh, between language and grammar and logic is really between reality and thoughts. Aristotle argues that if PNC were not true of things, then we could not use thoughts and words to signify things, and in general, we could not think and speak about things. He concludes that if PNC were not true of things, then thought and language about things would be impossible. So that's the core answer, is that we couldn't make sense of the world if we didn't have this idea that one thing contradicts another or one thing cannot contradict itself. So we have, going down here, 
clearer statement on the PNC. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Aristotle's central concern is the relativist challenge to the fundamentalist, uh, fundamental metaphysical principles such as the principle of non-contradiction. As we saw above, Aristotle thinks that PNC is indeed a metaphysical principle, not a logical principle. What this means is that PNC or the PNC is one of the constraints that govern the mind independent reality. For Aristotle, reality is unitary, yet there are different kinds of entities with different essences in the world. PNC is perhaps the most plausible constraint for the organization of these different kinds of entities. Plausibly, PNC rules out certain combinations of properties that an entity might have. For instance, no entity can both be, can be both green and red all over at the same time or solid and liquid. So the main point there is that the PNC is such that it's essential to the way in which we understand reality in the first place. In other words, the PNC is the principle of non-contradiction, which basically is the idea that something cannot both be and not be at the same time, which is a basic way in which we understand what reality is before we even start thinking of logic to begin with, something like that. That in other words, logic is following such thinking about reality, such metaphysical thinking, which is primary, and it's in this, according to Taco, more primary than logic itself. Okay, so that's how that PNC is working and yeah and so when we consider the um, basic point here that Taco is making about Aristotle's uh, metaphysics that follows back to the original point that when we're considering metaphysics or the methodology of metaphysics that the methodology of metaphysics is such whereby we move from the universal to the particular. So in this case, what's fundamental here is this idea that things cannot contradict themselves. See, things cannot be self-contradictory. So that being that things cannot be self-contradictory uh, rules the way we understand reality, it must also govern how we understand logic itself, but it's more primary to metaphysics is what Taco's point is. Okay? So, and ultimately Aristotle's point. So I think that helps and take it from there. Thank you. Have a nice weekend.